Howdy, everybody. Um, one of my subscribers um, had a question, and uh, thanks a lot for all you subscribers out there that make a comment. I try to get back with you as soon as I can and uh, try to help you out the best I can. Sometimes it's uh, easier to show something than it is to actually write it out in a text message or, or whatever the communication line is. So, anyhow, I thought I'd go over a little bit this morning. Uh, I've got this uh, Cummins 4BT VE pump. And basically, uh, Cummins 4BT VE pump is identical to the 6BT VE pump, except the only thing that's different is basically your delivery valves, which are here. So instead of having four delivery valves, these will actually, your injector lines will come on. Instead of a four cylinder, you'd have six of these. So basically, it's uh, pretty much the same. So first of all, let's get started because uh, I almost blew it up, okay? Um, something that you need to check when you buy a used uh, 4BT or 6BT engine is right here. And let me show you this. If the engine's been sitting for a long time, uh, which my engine was, has been sitting for several years when I bought it, and I knew that, um, uh, the engine was sitting on its side. So basically, uh, you've got your injector pump here. This would be kind of the orientation of it sitting in the engine. Well, it was basically laid over to the side just like this. So what happened was, I guess there was some uh, moisture in the fuel. Um, the moisture kind of congregated on the top side of this cover of your governor uh, spring housing cover. And um, when I went to start it, luckily, I actually had a steel plate and I thought to myself, I better just have this or a piece of two by four or something, just in case for some reason something was to go wrong. So when I did start it, it went max RPM on me instantly. Um, I had to use the metal uh, plate, cover the intake hole going into the, the head to kill it. I was like, what in the world just happened? Um, I looked at my <clears throat> power screw, which is right here. As you see that, it still has the band on there. The crimp on band that goes around there is still there. I was like, well, nobody messed with that. So what in the world was the problem? So then further looking into, I uh, took this off here and figured out uh, what the issue was. So what I've got here is I'm trying to hold everything in place because I am getting ready to put this back together. But So let's go over this right quick while we have it. This is your, your plunger, okay? This is what goes up and down inside that hole of your head, okay? Underneath this is a cam. So this goes up and down, up and down, up and down as your engine is rotating. What happens is it fills this cavity in this hole right here. And as your engine rotates, this will go up, down, up, down. What that does is that pressurizes that diesel fuel inside that hole. And what does it go from there? Well, these little grooves on this are very important because as it's turning, it will only allow fuel to go to certain ports on this head. And when it pushes that fuel through those ports, it will then go to the correct firing order injector. That way it will create pressure, fire the injector, boom, you have combustion, and then your engine will start and run okay now inside these delivery valves is basically a valve um it's pretty much a check valve so as it pressurizes and pushes fuel out to your injector okay then it's, it be, almost becomes a check valve it won't let that fuel bleed back into your head area okay so as you take these delivery valves apart there's some springs in there there's some washers in there um it's very important to get that back together right now something to remind yourself is this is very important as well is that these delivery valves it's real important that they're torqued correctly 30 foot pounds of torque on these delivery valves that's what you need to successfully seat this washer put the the right amount of pressure on there and then that way everything works right. Now, look at this right here in the center of your head. This is a bolt, okay? But it's a funny bolt. It has a special head on there. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but there's a special 
socket that you need to buy to get this big one out. You can take this one out, that's no problem. This one is the important one. This has to be torqued to 50 foot pounds. If you don't torque this right, okay, that is what sets the pressure and the depth down in here. And what that does is that is what also creates the proper amount of pressure for to fire your injectors, okay? So keep that in mind. So the delivery valves are 30 foot pounds. The center bolt is 50. You can get these uh, this tool online, Amazon, or um, eBay. So get that socket uh, to make sure that you're good to go. 30 and 50, all right? So with that, here's the old governor spring right here. Um, I did pick up a 3200 governor spring. That's gonna be reinstalled when I put this back together. Now, something that came out of this was this right here. This was sitting in the, in the top cover when I took the, the cover off the governor, where the governor spring is, this was just laying in there. I have no idea what it goes to. So I gotta do some research. That was not on my other VE pump, my son's pump. So I don't know what that is. I need to do some research. It, it, I thought maybe it was the little disc that goes underneath the, uh, uh, in between your cam and basically your, uh, your, I don't know what you call this, um, pressure rod, whatever. Uh, anyhow, it goes underneath there. That's, that's some other video. I'll show you guys what that is. This is something different. So, hey, write down in the comments if you know what that is. Okay. So that's that. <clears throat> All right. So now let's get to the actual injector pump. This is real important because this is what I found when my engine basically over revved. So you've got your fly weights right here. Somebody had asked in one of the comments, Hey man, what's your fly weights? So this is your fly weights right here. As these, as, as this engine picks up RPM, these fly weights will move out. And when they move out, they're pushing back on your throttle. Okay. So what that, uh, what that prevents, and also you've got your governor spring in here, that prevents your engine from overrunning. Okay. As this goes backwards, it's pulling that spring. Okay. It, it will allow some pressure, but also allow it to push back in to prevent your overspeed of your engine. So first thing you need to check maybe before you get an engine or start an engine, number one, make sure you have a two by four steel plate to cover the intake or pull your cover off. If you wanna go ahead and change out and put a different spring in there, make sure these are working correctly. As these come out and there's four of them, there's all the way around, um, make sure that everything's working freely. That's what you wanna have on a successful and operating VE pump. All right, something else to look at. Somebody asked a question, hey man, what about my timing? Okay, all right. See this mark right here? This mark aligns with the back of the timing case on this 4VT. 6BT will have the same thing. This is a factory set mark. They basically check it, take a chisel, chisel it in there. Now, you can buy a special tool to actually set, it goes into the middle of this big head or big bolt i should say goes in here and you can actually set your plunger depth and whenever you do that by rotating your ve pump assembly that's what these little slots are for they're not directly a a perfect ground it's actually made to rotate this pump okay number one you want to rotate it so this lines up with the mark on the back of your uh, timing case cover, okay? But I'm gonna show you something here in a minute, okay? Number one, this is your fuel supply. That's where that goes, okay? That's very important as well. Now, let me take you over here and I'll show you what's going on over here. Okay, so let's look at this right here. Right here on the back side of this cover, as you can see, we have that timing mark right there. See that? See the bottom one? It's bigger. The top one is the one I made, okay? It's important to, to note that your injector pump is basically the old style distributor, okay? Back in the days, you used to advance your timing a little bit 
and um, actually bring your firing up closer to the top dead center, okay? So what this does, especially on a 4BT, it will help your engine run a little bit smoother. Take a tape measure and measure from the big one, one eighth of an inch, and then remark it with a scribe. Now, when you do that, it's gonna allow you to, when you put your pump on here, instead of aligning with this one, you're gonna line it with the new mark, one eighth of an inch up, okay? That's gonna allow it to start a little bit easier on cold days, and also help smooth out the engine a little bit, okay? So that's gonna be helpful, something to, to keep in mind. Now, something else that, th th there's a lot of different fittings on your fuel system, okay? There are, there, there's a lot of different ones. And it's important to note and understand what they all do so that you can have a better idea, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot something. So everybody's aware, here's your injector lines. These go up to your injectors, okay? Make sure that these are all nice and tight. Very important, get these nice and tight. If you don't get these tight, you can actually have a little leak there. Okay, this is your fuel supply. This is what actually pressurizes your injector pump, okay? So inside the injector pump, as fuel comes in, it comes into the front side of that your injector pump. Inside the injector pump, as your engine's turning, it has little veins, okay, that actually expand out. It'll actually pressurize your injector pump, okay? And the reason it does that is that it, it allows to push any air out, okay? Where's the air go? Well, the air comes out right here. Okay, this is your return, fuel return, okay? Don't, don't get that um, mixed up with your injector return. I'll show you what that is in just a second. So fuel comes in, it pressurizes the pump, okay? From there, while your engine is running, it is making pressure, sending fuel up to your injectors, firing each injector like it's supposed to. Any excess fuel that's not being used by the injectors then gets pushed out of here. Now, something real important is on the back side, front and back of this, there should be either aluminum washer or a brass washer, and that's a crush washer. That's gonna help seal that. But also, that banjo bolt that goes in there, look at that closely, because this one, there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of a hole in that banjo bolt, okay? And that allows just enough fuel to an air, if there is any air that's trapped in your VE pump to actually escape and go back to either your fuel system and or uh, your filter, okay? So very important. Take a little uh, piece of wire. I mean, I'm talking like a, like a wire brush size. That's how small that hole is and make sure that that is clear. If that's not clear, like mine was not, you're not able to get the air out, okay? And then on top of that, it could actually overpressurize your pump a little bit, but on the pump, there is a pressure bypass. I'm really not gonna go over that because it's just really not needed, but anyhow, so fuel comes in, any excess fuel goes out, okay? Now, where can you have leaks? Well, it could be leaks several different places. Number one, this hose right here goes or comes from your fuel tank, all right? So, comes from your fuel pump uh, tank. And it goes from your fuel pump, okay, up to your fuel uh, filter housing. Here, you've got another banjo bolt, and there's actually a bleed right here. You can actually bleed that out a little bit, okay? It's got crush washers on both front and back of that. It goes through your filter, and then it comes out here. There's also another crush washer on both sides of this banjo bolt. Then it goes to this right here. There is a little fitting back here. This has got the rubber grommets on both sides of this. Make sure that these are tight, okay, or else they will leak and possibly um, either leak fuel, or if your engine's off, it could actually uh, suck some air and then cause it to gravity feed back into your fuel tank, okay? So something to keep in mind there. So I hope that kind of explains the fuel system a little bit. And I'll go over um, this right here. This is your fuel return. This is your 
it comes back over here and tees into right here. This is where it tees. This line is coming from your injectors, okay? This is your injector return line, okay? Any excess fuel that the injectors aren't using, it bypasses and they both tee together right here. Then this come, goes back to either your fuel tank, just depends on how you got it plumbed, or it could go directly back into the, the, uh, the fuel supply line. So I hope that helps everybody out. Uh, these, these do have the little rubber, rubber grommets in there as well. Um, if you take those apart, just put a little bit of oil on there before you put them back together so that they don't get uh, kind of watered up as you're tightening these up and uh, get them nice and snug. So <clears throat> hope that helps out. And uh, sometimes it can be complex, even though it's, it's very simple and what it is and what it does. And uh, hope that helps uh, one of my subscribers out, out there. It's got a little question. And um, if you guys got any comments, man, listen below. I usually get back with you guys pretty soon, pretty fast. And hope you all enjoyed this, this video. See ya.